I hope you're all doing very well. In today's episode, I'm going to be talking about why you should not be doing the Pico Eero to Pico Rivo hike in Madeira. So Pico Eero is the third tallest peak in Madeira and you can drive up there and park your car and then do the traverse along to the highest peak, Pico Rivo, which has become kind of a big thing to do. Lots of YouTubers have gone there, done lots of drone footage, you know, it looks incredible. But I'm gonna go over why you should not do this hike because everyone recommends it. But stay to the end because I'm gonna do a little bit of a plot twist and tell you why you should do it. Firstly, before we get into that, I am Dan and I like to escape by having fun on my bikes and doing other adventures. If that's something that interests you, then please do hit that like button and subscribe to my channel as it helps a lot and I appreciate it so much. Okay, so the first big reason why you should not do this hike is the weather. If the weather is bad and you've got lots of cloud coverage, it's not worth the hike, to be honest. We did it on the way back and it was very misty and cloudy. It was not worth it, to be honest. And I felt sorry for all the people going along. You know, there might have been a break in the cloud, but it looked like there was nothing gonna let up. You don't get any view and it's a lot of work. And that brings me on to the second reason. It does require a lot of fitness to go from Pico de Era to Pico Riva. There is a shorter route, which you can go from Achada do Tixera. So you can park your car there and it's a short hike up to Pico Rivo if you just wanted to get to the top of the tallest mountain in Madeira. But a lot of people start from Pico Aero and it is worth it, but that's something to consider if you feel like someone in your group might find it very difficult because there is a lot of stairs. If it's a bit wet, it can be quite slippery and it's just a lot of descending and ascending. I think in total it was 6.72 miles and about 998 meters of ascending and descending. So that is a lot to consider if you're gonna go on a casual hike from the third tallest peak to the highest peak in Madeira. And it's generally not worth doing in bad weather because your views aren't gonna be that great. And that's something that will take your mind off things when the going gets tough. And thirdly, the reason is not having the proper gear. I you know you don't have to do this but these are something that i suggest and i do on all my hikes and that is one have good waterproof layers whether that's a rain jacket that you can take on and off and also rain trousers because you never know if the weather's going to change also quick drying layers because it can get very sweaty on the roots especially in the winter time when we did it and you know you just don't know if you're going to turn a corner and then you're going to get blasted by wind and then you're going to go up a little bit more it's going to start raining get a bit wet and then it clears out and becomes really hot again so you know it's very variable on there because when we started the hike it was zero degrees and very windy and it was horrible to be in so i was really layered up and as i got into the hike i started taking layers off secondly a good comfortable backpack because you want to have somewhere to store those layers carry lots of snacks with you and something that's comfortable to hike in. The other thing is carry some water. For me, I personally like to have a hydration bladder because I can drink a lot while I'm walking. I don't have to stop, pull the water bottle out and thing, but you know, whatever works for you. Really good sturdy footwear. I know I saw a lot of people doing it in trainers and you can get away with wearing trainers, but I was wearing nice hiking boots. To be honest, they're a bit old now. I've been hiking in them for 10 years, but I, I was still slipping and my partner slipped and she had really good boots, but because she's got good ankle protection, it stopped her from rolling her ankles. You know, it's just very uneven surfaces, lots of steps, steep declines, steep ascents. So you want something good and sturdy that's gonna make it more comfortable for you because there's nothing worse than one, having cold feet, especially in the winter time, and two, just rolling your ankle, slipping over and hurting yourself. Some other recommendations is head torch because we set off in the dark, so it would have been nice to have a head torch then. My one broke, unfortunately, so I couldn't bring it on this trip. Uh, I was using my iPhone to light the way, but in the winter, that's another thing, having gloves because if you, I didn't have gloves and it was freezing my hands off holding this torch in front of me. Um, other things, you might want hiking sticks. If, if you feel comfortable with doing that, you know, it's recommended if you do because it can be unstable in some areas. And then also really good snacks and maybe some baby wipes just because, you know, they came in handy when I got to a toilet stop and they were very much welcomed. So those are a few reasons why you should not do this hike. But now let's get into why you should. And this is probably one of the best hikes I've done. Um, in terms of terrain, probably not the best because it's just a lot of pathways, but just watching the sunrise come up and hit those mountains and the clouds breaking. It was just 
a miracle that it came through. I was thought we were going to be stuck in the cloud and not see anything, but when it broke out and the views came into, into fruition, I was amazed. And so here's a tip. Do start off early, start in the dark. I know we got there very early. I think in our heads, we thought sunrise was at 6.30, but it's winter time, so it didn't rise, arise till eight. So we parked up and slept in the car for about an hour and a bit. And then we set off on our journey in the dark. As it got brighter and brighter, you could see the colors, the orange, the purples, the blues, and then just the orange light hitting the top of the peaks. It was just incredible to see. And also at that time, there wasn't many people around. It was very windy and cold. So I think that put a lot of people off, but yeah, it was amazing. It wasn't until later on when we were hiking back, it got very busy and that's why I'm saying start really early because you're gonna beat all the crowds, especially to the top, and you get rewarded with some peace and serenity and also some amazing views. And it's just not worth doing it when there's loads of people going, you're having to queue on stairs because you've got to let people up first, then you can go down. It's just the pathway is only built for one way and you know, you've got people going both ways because you've got to hike back there unless you get a taxi from that other end yeah, very steep in places, but when you're greeted with such scenery, you forget about all the exercise you're doing and how tired you actually are because you're like just mind blown about the scenery. And that's why I loved Madeira. And also if you saw my mountain bike video, which I'll link up here, it was just an amazing experience and providing the weather's good, you go early and you've got the correct essentials, got a good level of fitness, then 100% this is an amazing hike to do. I understand why so many people want to do it. Yeah, just prepare yourself for it. It is, it is a long one and it is quite tiresome, especially on the way back, because that's where we found it a struggle because that's when all the cloud came in. Luckily, as we were descending, go really early and then hike back before all the crowds come because you'll be, it'll be just peaceful and yeah. It's just amazing. Just do it. Just do this hike and listen to my tips and do it correctly and you'll be fine. But let me know, have you ever wanted to do this hike in Madeira or have you done this hike before? What other things would you do in this island? I know I definitely want to go back and do some mountain biking, like I said in my previous video. And yeah, that's it for today's episode. If you enjoyed it, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channels. It helps a lot and I appreciate it so, so much. Hope you're staying safe, staying positive, having fun, and I shall see you in the next one. Oh, oh, oh.